In the previous video, we discussed hydrostatic forces and we applied those principles to a barometer which is used to measure atmospheric pressure. In this video, we're going to look at a device called a manometer and in particular, we're going to be looking at YouTube manometers. We're also going to relate that to what we've already learned about atmospheric pressure and hydrostatic pressure. So we have two different scenarios here. In the first scenario, we have a gas in a container and that container is connected to a YouTube manometer. And that's going to enable us to measure the pressure of the gas in that container. We have a similar setup in the second scenario, but as we're going to see in the second scenario, the pressure of the gas is actually less than atmospheric pressure. Whereas in the first scenario, the pressure of the gas is higher than atmospheric pressure. So the first thing that we note from our previous tutorial is the pressure at the same height in a given fluid is going to be equal. So we know that the pressure at this surface of our liquid must equal the pressure at the same height in the other arm of the YouTube manometer. The pressure in the left hand arm here represents the pressure of the gas. And if that pressure is equal to the pressure here, then that pressure is made up of two things. It's made up of atmospheric pressure, because the right hand arm of the YouTube manometer is open to atmosphere, but we also have a column of liquid here that's going to create hydrostatic pressure. Let's assume for the purpose of these calculations that atmospheric pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure at sea level. And we know that that is 101.325 pascals. Let's also assume that our fluid is mercury. And we know that mercury has a density of 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed. These are some of the facts that we established in the previous video. Now, for this first scenario, let's say that our height of mercury in the right hand arm of the manometer equals 35 centimeters, which is equal to 0.35 meters. And what we want to determine is the pressure of the gas. We're going to discuss two different types of pressure. We're going to discuss absolute pressure which is the true value of the pressure of the gas. And we're going to discuss something called gauge pressure, which uses our atmospheric pressure as a datum. And all this will become clear in a moment. Now, if we wanted to determine the absolute pressure of that gas, so P absolute, we would need to do atmospheric pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure caused by the column of mercury. We said that hydrostatic pressure was density times gravity times height. Therefore, the absolute pressure of our gas is 101,325 plus 13,600 times gravity 9.81 times height in metres 0 0.35, giving us an absolute pressure equal to 148021 pascals, or we can call that 148 kilopascals. But if we want to calculate the gauge pressure, then we're going to need to subtract atmospheric pressure from our absolute pressure. So we would have 148021 minus 101325, giving us a value equal to 46.7 kilopascals. Now what you may have realised is that we could have simplified that calculation by just doing rho gh, because all we've done is we've 
added on atmospheric pressure, and then we've subtracted atmospheric pressure further down. And we'll come on to the reason why that's not always the best approach when we look at our second scenario. Before we do that, it's important to understand why gauge pressures are important. We've calculated the absolute pressure of that gas. So in here at the surface, we know that the absolute pressure is 148 kilopascals. But we wouldn't have a resultant pressure of 148 kilopascals pushing against that container. That wouldn't be the pressure that caused the stress on the outside of the cylinder. And the reason for that is because on the outside we have atmospheric pressure balancing some of that pressure. So in actual fact, we would need to use the gauge pressure if we wanted to determine whether that container was going to fail. So we can calculate the absolute pressure of the gas, which could potentially give us more information about its volume and its temperature. But if we're considering whether the container is going to fail, then we need to work with our gauge pressures. Let's take a look at our second example. So in our second example, we know that the pressure at this point in our mercury equals the pressure at this point in our mercury. So we can see here that atmospheric pressure is actually higher than the pressure of our gas. In the left hand arm, we have the absolute pressure of the gas plus the hydrostatic pressure due to the column of mercury. And on the right hand side or the right hand arm, all we have is atmospheric pressure. Let's say for argument's sake that the height this time is 0.25 meters. Now if we want to determine the absolute pressure then, so P ABS, we can rearrange that formula by subtracting rho GH from each side and we get P ABS equals PATM minus rho GH. We can plug in our numbers. 101, 325, minus 13,600, times 9.81, times 0.25. And that gives us an absolute pressure equal to 68.0 kilopascals. But if we want to calculate our gauge pressure, then the way that we did that previously was our absolute pressure minus our atmospheric pressure. So we have 68 kilopascals, or the full calculator answer was 67,971 pascals minus 101.325. Now what we notice this time then, is that we actually have a negative answer, minus 33.4 kilopascals. And this is the reason why it's not a good idea to calculate gauge pressure using rho GH. Because if we used rho GH, we would have found the gauge pressure to be positive rather than negative. So if we wanted to determine the temperature of our gas, or the volume of our gas, then we would need to use our absolute pressure. That's the actual pressure of the gas in the container. However, if we want to determine whether this container is going to fail, we would need to use our gauge pressure. Because in this instance, we have a pressure pushing outwards equal to 68 kilopascals, but we have a pressure pushing inwards, a much larger pressure due to atmosphere, of 101 kilopascals, or 101325 pascals. So the net result is that there's going to be a compressive stress on the container in which the gas is contained. Whereas in the previous example, because the gas pressure was higher than atmospheric pressure, the net result was a pressure or a force pushing outwards. 
So if we're calculating properties of the gas, we would use absolute pressure. Under most other circumstances, we would use gauge pressure as atmospheric pressure acts on the outside of our container and would also act on the outside of various other components such as pressure vessels.